This ayah comes as a, a continuing message and a completion of a previous ayah, ayah number 8 of Surah Al-Hashr, whom Allah the Almighty in this ayah admired Al-Fuqara, Al-Muhajirin, those who were expelled from their homes, from their wealth, seeking the pleasure of Allah, seeking the bounty of Allah. They left Mecca with nothing. Yet they were supporting Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That was their goal. That's why they immigrated. Allah the Almighty described them as Ula'ika humu sadiqoon. Such are the truthful ones. Allahu Akbar. May Allah make us like them. Then the following ayah he admired. Alladina tabawwa dara wal imana min qabilihim. Those who were settled in Al Madina and adopted faith before them. They love those who immigrated to them and find not any want in their chest for what the immigrants were given but give them preference over themselves, even though they are in need for it. And whoever is protected against the stinginess of his soul, it is those who will be the successful ones. Subhanallah. Allah the Almighty admired Al Muhajirin who sacrifice everything for the sake of Allah then he uh, described them as Ula'ika humus sadiqun such are the truthful ones. And he also admired Alladina Tabawa Dara al Imana min Kablihim. Yeah, and the original dwellers of Al Madina, Al Ansar. So he initially admired Al Muhajirin and their sacrifices. And he also admired Al Ansar and their sacrifices, which were in the form of supporting the immigrants. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made Hijrah to Al Madina, Kana Yukru Baina Ashabi. Al Muhajirin or book have no money, have no homes, have no business. So the Prophet ﷺ used to draw lots to see which one of Al-Ansar will look after one of Al-Muhajirin or a family of Al-Muhajirin. To look after them in what sense? To support them financially, to find them residency, to treat them like family members. And we've studied before some bright and beautiful examples such as the beautiful uh, reaction and the treatment of Sa'd ibn al-Rabi'a to one of the Muhajireen. Sa'd ibn al-Rabi'a was one of Al-Ansar, one of the richest people of Al-Ansar. And it happened that his luck to be a brother to one of Al-Muhajireen by the name Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, may Allah be pleased with him. We all know that Abdul Rahman ibn Awf is a very wealthy companion and he is one of the 10 heaven pound companions and he, is like, he was like a millionaire. But what we do not know is that when he reached Al Madinah, he was broke. He had nothing. Similarly, all the Muhajireen. We studied before about Suhaib al Rumay. As he sneaked out of Mecca, they chased him. And when they were about to capture him, he turned around and he took some arrows from his quiver. He put them in the bow and he said, You know how good I am. In archery. Whoever will draw near, I'm going to shoot him. What do you want from me? They said, Jitana Fakiran Sulukan. When you came to Mecca, you were a slave, you were poor, you owned nothing, you were owned. And now, after all the wealth you made, because he was a very successful uh, merchant and he made some wealth, now you want to take the money and leave. He said, So you're after the money. If I tell you where is the money, would you let me go? They said, That's a deal. So he told them, this is where I hid the money. Go and take it all. Go and take it all. All what I want is just to go by myself, to perform hijrah, to immigrate for the sake of Allah and his messenger, peace be upon him. So simply, he sacrificed all his life saving and investment, all, all, he gave it all. Fi sabi lillah. 
there is a true indication that his migration was sincerely for the sake of Allah. That's why the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, have been informed by Allah about the sacrifices of all his companions, including Suhaib al rumi So when he reached, uh, when he reached Al Madina, Muhajiran, he said, Rabbi Hal Bayu Aba Yahya. Successful indeed is your trade, Aba Yahya. Allah is happy with the business that you made with him. Yeah, you give them the dunya, take it. So Abdul Rahman ibn Awf was, when he arrived to Al Madina, book. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam appointed Sa'd ibn al Rabi' to look after him. And Sa'd ibn al Rabi' was very happy that now he has a brother in faith. So he says to him, Ya Abdul Rahman, everybody knows how, well, how wealthy I am. You can choose one of my houses. I have two houses. Choose whichever one you like, it's yours. And I'm going to divide my wealth between you and I. Allahu Akbar. وَالَّذِينَ تَبَوَّأُوا الدَّارَ وَالْإِيمَانَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ يُحِبُّونَ يُحِبُّونَ They love مَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ They love those who immigrated unto them. They love المهاجرين. Do we love our Syrian refugees that much? Or do we think that they are burdened and we say, when will they go home? Stop the immigrants. We cannot afford to take more refugees. Send them to another country. Is this how we show our Islam to Allah? Hmm? Is this the practical application of what we have learned? No, of course not. So Abdul Rahman ibn Awf says to Sa'ad ibn Rabi' May Allah bless you in your wealth, in your home, and your family. Just show me where is the market. I'm going to start a little by little. And in a very short period of time, Allah blessed him. And he started his business. And he says, subhanallah, that if I flip a stone, I will find money beneath it. This is a metaphor. Yani in it, business, he will invest in it. As they say that, dirt will turn into tibr, into gold in his hand. By the blessings of Allah because of his sadq, because of his truthfulness, and given in charity. Or being generous. So after the battle of Bani Quraiza, you know that in Bani Quraiza, they supported uh, the Meccans and Ghatafan. It's a Jewish tribe. They supported them against Muslims. When the Prophet ﷺ heard that Meccans and Ghatafan have formed an army of 10,000 on the fifth year after the migration, the Battle of the Trench, when Salman suggested let's dig a trench and the Prophet ﷺ uh, agreed and they started immediately executing the command and they dug a huge ditch. So Muslims were inside but they were protecting the front yard confronting this huge army. If any of them were there to cross or jump they would shoot him in order to protect the front yard. But at home were only women and a few individuals of the handicapped, the weak and the elders so the Jewish people of Bani Quraiza seized this opportunity and they attacked the women, the Muslim women. And it was the wrong time to do so. This is not any treachery. They betrayed Muslims even though they have uh, treaties with them. So at the time of war, when this happened, then Allah the Almighty defeated the Meccans and they returned home without achieving anything. The Prophet ﷺ was ordered to take care of Bani Qurayza. So anyway, they were evacuated. And now there was plenty of war spoils in the form of lots, properties, gardens, dead palm trees, and so on. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam offered Al-Ansar the following offer. Al-Ansar, the people who originally the world in Medina, this is their city, this is their hometown before Al-Muhajirin have immigrated to it. And that was on the fifth year after the migration. They said, thank you so much for supporting your brothers of Al-Muhajirin. And now I would like to give you one of two choices. Because you have supported them financially. Because you have supported them financially. Now there is plenty of war spoils. Either I give them 
And now you keep your money and your properties which you supported your brothers of Al Muhajirin well, or that they will keep whatever you supported them well, and you guys all share the spoils of the Battle of Bani Quraidah. What would you think the choice of Al Ansar would be? Wallahi, it is beyond what I expected. Al Ansar said to the Prophet, وسلم, or better than that man, prophet of Allah that they keep whatever we supported them with for them and all the spoils of the battle of Bani Quraidah is also for them يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ they love the immigrants they love them the word حُب the true love they do not only show that and the application of this love is that they give precedence to them over themselves. Not because they are well off, no. Even though sometimes they didn't have. Not everyone was like Sa'd ibn Rabia. Not everyone was like Sa'd ibn Mu'adh or Usaid ibn Hudayr. No. Most of the companions were poor. But when it comes to the brotherhood for the sake of Allah, loving one another for the sake of Allah, they did what Allah the Almighty described them with the following. Imagine there are some people who make no sense whatsoever. They attribute them, attribute themselves to Islam. They say that we're Muslims, we're following this sect or that sect. And they have nothing to do in life but criticizing and condemning those companions of the Prophet وسلم, whether Al-Ansar or Al-Muhajirin look what Allah the Almighty said about them so in ayah number 8 he admired Al-Muhajirin and he said Ula'ika humus sadiqun they are all the truthful then he came in the following ayah and he said wa yu'thiruna ala anfusihim walau kana bihim khasasa they give preference to others over themselves even though they are in dire need for what they give them and whoever is protected again is the stinginess of himself such are the successful ones may Allah make us amongst them many of the Mufassirin said this last segment of the ayah is referring to a story that happened which will be shared and narrated in a following hadith that we will study inshallah in a little bit so that's why I prefer that we save the story until we come to study uh, the hadith and now with the second reference uh, from the Quran Surah Al-Insan ayah number 8 in ayah number 8 which we have read repeatedly in which Allah the Almighty says أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ويطعمون الطعام على حبه مسكينا ويتيما وأسيرا and I wish we can also learn the rest of the ayah إنما نطعمكم لوجه الله لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا why إنا نخاف من ربنا يوما عبوسا قمطريرا and what was the outcome فوقاهم الله شر ذلك اليوم ولق Beautiful verses. Hmm? So Allah the Almighty is admiring some people who feed and help those who are in need. Uh, number nine. Innama only we feed you, we only feed you for the sake of Allah who do not expect nor want any appreciation from no one other than Allah. We don't even any uh, gratitude or thankfulness. We did this because we fear Allah and we hope for His word and we desire salvation on the day of judgment, etc. So Allah the Almighty promised that He will deliver to them what they expected and anticipated from Him. The reference in this ayah uh, number nine is the word ala hubbihi. Ala hubbihi. And ayah number eight. In fact, in fact, many of us, when uh, the wife and the maid, they decide to clean up the fridge and they find some leftover food. 
it's been sitting in the fridge for a while. Many people say, why don't you get it, give it to uh, the maid or to the servant or to the driver instead of throwing it in the trash? Haram. Don't throw it in the trash. Give it to this person. So you don't want to eat it. And that's why he decided to give it to somebody else. And you expect to be rewarded for that. Obviously, you will be rewarded for any good you do. But Allah Almighty says, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حتى تنفقوا مما تحبون. You want to achieve piety and righteousness? Then you've got to spin of what you love. You've got to spin of what you like. Not that which you want to throw away, then you decided to give it to somebody else because anyway you're throwing it away. Or you give it to Salvation Army because you want to write it off your tax. No, your main purpose is that those people are in need and they can afford to help. So I'm not going to give them the leftover or something that uh, is already torn apart so there is no use for it for me anyway. I was going to throw it in the trash. Let me give it to somebody. No, no, no. They give of what they love. لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ Unless if you spend what you, from whatever you love, what you like to keep for yourselves. And Allah promised in Surah Al-Imran, whatever you spend of a thing, Allah is fully aware of it. So Allah is fully aware that you, you give this person your thawb, your dress, your shoes, even though it is still intact and you like them and they are fairly new, but you're anticipating the pleasure of Allah. Okay, you give it to him, you get the reward, guaranteed. وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِينَ سورة Al-Imran. Similarly, in سورة Al-Insan, ayah number 8, وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ This food was not spoiled, no. It is something that I like to eat it. It's fish, barbecue, T-bone steak, uh, big, uh, you know, uh, big size prawns, seafood. Then the food is served. You turn around and say, where is the driver? The driver is sitting in, in the car in this hot weather uh, downstairs. Call him up. Why? Let him eat with us. Really? Yes, the Prophet ﷺ would do that. And he have always done that. And those who study the seerah will find themselves, not just compelled, they will find themselves attracted to do like that. Imagine the maid, the cook, who cooked the food, and they don't taste it. They bring the food, they serve it on the table, you and your guests eat, and perhaps the rest will be uh, trashed and wasted, but they are not allowed to taste it. That's a condition in the contract, like those who are working in the hotels. No, 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 no. They eat the first uh, turn like me exactly. This is a quality which Allah the Almighty admire those people for. And they say that for doing so, you will be righteous. For doing so, you will be saved from the horror of the day. Why? Because Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, I'm very pleased to announce that I have seen uh, many people, yes, Alhamdulillah, who are very, very rich, MashaAllah. We heard about, uh, you know, Bill Gates donating that much and this person donating that much. I know of Muslims who donated also billions, but they don't talk about it. They don't make a big deal out of it. They keep it because they are anticipating the reward from Allah. They, it's not to write it off their tax. No, that is to save their word for themselves in the hereafter. This is for themselves. And I've seen them. When I was invited once, they called the drivers, they called the servants. They have many people working for them, hundreds. Uh, they call whoever is on the spot, come not to give them their food to go so that they can sit and eat in the kitchen or in the basement or in the garage or the villa. No. He invites them to sit with us on the table. He said, Alhamdulillah, I've lived to see that. I love to see the followers of the Prophet ﷺ as of today, whom Allah blessed with wealth, 
they behave like the Prophet Sallallahu taught them. This chapter is about that, brothers and sisters, which is known as Al-Ithar. Uh, these are the two Quranic verses in the beginning of the chapter of um, altruism and sympathy. We'll take a short break and soon after that, inshallah, we'll begin with the first hadith in this chapter. Please stay tuned. Rasulallah, Habiballah, Rasulallah, Habiballah, Rasulallah, Habiballah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Let me remind with our phone numbers. Ayak was 002 then 0238 0132 the email address is gardens at huda.tv so what we got here is hadith number 563 that is the first hadith in the chapter hadith number 563 the hadith is narrated by Abu Huraira may Allah be pleased with him and uh, this hadith explains the last segment of the previous reference ayah number 9 of surah al hash وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا وَمَنْ يُنْقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And some of the commentators of the Qur'an and the interpreters of the Qur'an said this ayah was revealed concerning this incident and this household, this uh, companion of Al-Ansar and his wife. Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه قال جاء رجل إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال إني مجهود فأرسل إلى بعض نسائه فقالت والذي بعثك بالحق ما عندي إلا ماء ثم أرسل إلى أخرى فقالت مثل ذلك حتى قلنا كلهن مثل ذلك لا والذي بعثك بالحق ما عندي إلا ماء فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من يضيف هذا الليلة فقال رجل من الأنصار أنا يا رسول الله فانطلق به إلى رحله فقال لامرأته أكرمي ضيف رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وفي رواية قال لامرأته هل عندك شيء فقالت لا إلا قياني قال فعلليهم بشيء وإذا أرادوا العشاء فنوميهم وإذا دخل ضيفنا فأطفئ السراج وأريه أن نأكل فقعدوا وأكل الضيف وباتا طاويين فلما أصبح غدا على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال لقد عجب الله من صنيعكما بضيفكما الليلة متفق عليه I really don't know whether I should you know comply with my urge of crying because I feel very emotional or smiling and showing my very delight to know that this is happening in this ummah and this is the condition of our predecessors may Allah be pleased with them as far as for crying because the hadith in its beginning says that a man came to the Prophet and he said, I'm starving. I'm starving to death. Inni majhood. So the Prophet ﷺ sent ila ba'd nisa'ihi to some of his wives. Do you have anything to host a guest? So one of them said, Walladi ba'athaka bil haqqi ma indi illa ma. This is what is making me feel like I want to cry. Rasulullah ﷺ the most beloved to Allah, the best of all the creation of Allah, the most beloved to the Creator, the Almighty, have nothing at home but water. And that was the condition for days. She said, I swear to the one who sent you the truth. I'm not hiding anything. We don't even have dates. We have just water. ثم أرسل إلى أخرى he sent to another one of his wives, Do you have anything to feed this guy who is starving to death? فَقَالَتْ مِثْلَ ذَلِكْ She too said the same. I swear to the one who sent you the truth, we have nothing but water. 
حتى قلنا كلهن مثل ذلك. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was married to nine at a time at this time. So all of them, all of them confirmed the same. That all his wives, all his houses have nothing at home but water. لا والذي بعثك بالحق ما عندي إلا ماء. فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم It's like well the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did not feel sorry for that because it seemed like that was a norm as normal. Days after days they would not kindle fire, they would not start fire because they wouldn't cook. And if they had water and dates, they would be lucky. And sometimes, like in this case, uh, he just realized that we don't have but water when he asked if there is anything that we can feed our guest. And subhanallah, no objection. They chose the company of the Prophet Sallallahu When they thought, perhaps we can ask, we can ask the Prophet Sallallahu to uh, expand on us to make our living condition better. Especially that some of his companions are living in a, in a better living condition. So Allah the Almighty give them the ultimatum. If you desire the worldly life and its glitter, fine. The Prophet ﷺ will give you some money with the mut'ah. Then he will divorce you. You are on your own. Live the life that you want. But if you desire Allah wa Rasulahu wa dar al akhirata, you gotta be patient. And with patience comes the following words. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ أَعَدَّ لِلْمُحْسِنَاتِ مِنْ كُنَّ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Then indeed Allah has prepared for the good doers amongst you a great reward. May Allah be pleased with all the mothers of the believers, all of them. Allahumma ameen. So the Prophet ﷺ turned to his companions. So he began by himself. He began by his wives, as if there is anything. Then when there was nothing, he asked his companions. من يضيف هذا الليلة؟ Who can take care of our guest tonight? Who would like to give food to this guest tonight? من يضيف هذا الليلة؟ One of Al Ansar said, أنا يا رسول الله. Yet he knows that most likely he doesn't have enough food to feed the guest because of their poor condition. Likewise, who is that person? And who was his wife? Why do we worry about the wife? Of course we have to worry about the wife. If the wife was not on the same page, this man would not dare to say, Ana ya Rasulallah. His wife would make it very uh, problematic for him. Would turn his life into hell that you're embarrassing me. You're bringing me guests at home and we have nothing but the food of the kids. No, I'm going to feed my kids and go to heaven you and your <laughs> and your guest but he asked his wife we have the guest of the messenger of Allah what do we have at home she said you know that we only have the kids food food enough only for the kids he said put them to sleep this is what he said he said subhanallah uh, in the narration he said إذا أرادوا العشاء فنوميهم Keep them busy until they're tired and, uh, you know, if they ask for food, just keep them busy until they go to sleep. Then when our guest enters, turn the light off. Pretend that you're fixing the light lamp because it was oil lamp. So pretend that you're fixing it and then turn the light off. And she did exactly as he said. Not only that, listen to this, please, please listen to this in order to know what sincerity is. Many people ask, how can I make sure that I am sincere? Listen to this, look at the Arabic text. He said, and pretend that we're eating. So why did we turn the light off? We turned the light off so that he would not know how much food is there. Because if he were to see the food, he would be embarrassed to eat. I'm, I'm only eating your food. This food is barely enough for one or two. 
So turn the light off, put the food on the table, and then let's pretend that we're eating. We pretend as we're talking that we're chewing on food and we have nothing in our mouth. Look at that. They're dealing with Allah. They are anticipating their word only from Allah. That's why it doesn't matter whether the guests know that they are generous or not, whether the guest knows their sacrifices or not. Show him that were eating and in fact they were not eating so فَقَعَدُوا وَأَكَلَ الضَّيْفُ وَبَاتَ طَاوِيَيْنِ so they all sat they sat and they pretended that they were eating chewing on food and there was no food and the guest ate and they passed the night hungry in the morning when this Sahabi, the Ansari companion, came to the Prophet وسلم, he said to him, لَقَدْ عَجِبَ اللَّهُ مِنْ صَنِيعِكُمَا بِضَيْفِكُمَا اللَّيْلَةِ Allah the Almighty is very, very happy and he admired what you and your wife did with your guest last night. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. We all should understand that إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا I don't care what people think about me whether I'm generous or not and I should not expect no wait for any appreciation from people for doing any good for them because that would not pay me enough my ultimate goal is to make him happy with me is to make him be pleased with me and once I achieve that you're saved so what happened here is they turned the light off they sat with him and they pretended as if they were eating. They passed the night hungry. While the man ate, they all went to sleep. Then at dawn they went for Fajr prayer. Who saw this whole thing? Who narrated to us this whole thing? Allah the Almighty saw that in the middle of the night, in the darkness of the night, when there was no light lamp whatsoever. And he knew their plan. And he knew their ithar, how they give preference to their guests over themselves and over their kids for the sake of Allah. Because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, and let whoever believe in Allah and in the last day to honor his guest. To honor his guest. You don't have to wait for him to ask, do you care for some tea? Well, some people would say no, because in their cultural traditions, it is uh, shameful to say, yeah, give me. So they would say, no, don't ask. Do like Ibrahim السلام, rush to bring the food. Years and years ago, very first time I was invited to the house of an American family upstate in, in, in the States. And uh, people notes that there is somebody in town who is foreigner, is from Egypt, and uh, they hosted me. Would like to host you for lunch. I said, sure. We went. And uh, they really prepared a lot of food. I appreciated that. But what I was stuck with is that they asked me when they served the lunch, and he said, Muhammad, food is ready. It, it is our habit to say, no, thank you, expecting that the people would say, no, 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 you have to come. Well, I understand that I came all the way to eat. You know, they invited people and they made the food on my honor. And subhanAllah, it only happened once when I said, no, thank you. They said, okay. And they sat and they ate. And wallahi, I was starving. Nobody offered me twice. Nobody offered me twice. That was very weird. Different cultures, of course. Uh, as I said, I appreciated the generosity in the beginning that they invited me and they invited people to meet with me and they uh, encountered the trouble of making all this food. But they didn't bother to ask me twice. Once I said, uh, thank you, they said, okay. And then, obviously, since I was hungry, after dinner, was, uh, it was lunch, after lunch was over, they asked me if I care for ice cream. I said, yes. 
fast learner though. Ibrahim السلام, didn't ask his guests, would you like to eat? And what would you like to eat? Would you like to drink? سمين, immediately he slaughtered the calf and he uh, cleaned it up and he boiled it and he brought it on the table for them. Then he brought it near to them. This is generosity. This companion is Abu Talha. And his wife was Umm Sulaim. You know who's Abu Talha and who's Umm Sulaim? Umm Sulaim is the mother of Anas ibn Malik. May Allah be pleased with all of them. When her husband died, then Abu Talha came to propose to her. That was in the beginning of Islam after the Prophet ﷺ reached al Medina as a muhajir. And she said, مِثْلُكَ لَا يُرَدْ a person like you should not be rejected. This is a very beautiful proposal. But you are a kafir. I'm a Muslim woman. I ain't marrying a kafir. As a person, you've got everything that a woman may look for. But you're a kafir. I cannot marry you. She did not just turn him off and turn his uh, proposal down and that said, no. She started giving him da'wah. A person like you, with his intelligence, should know better, should think about God, should think about those idols which he worship, that you make them by your own hand or you purchase them. And you turn around to worship them and back from them and ask help from them. What happened to your common sense? So she left him thinking about it. She did really move the thoughts in his mind, in his heart. So he, uh, in no time, accepted Islam. And he came to propose to her. And his dowry was to accept Islam. And that's why the most valuable dowry in history is the dowry which was paid by Abu Talha to Umm Sulaim, which is Islam, to accept Islam. There was such a blessed family, and we spoke about also how once uh, Abu Talha wa Umm Sulaim, uh, they sent Anas ibn Malik with some loaves of bread to the Prophet وسلم, as he was starving, and how the Prophet وسلم, brought all his companions or Ahlul Sufa. We spoke about all of that before. But look at this amazing, amazing story. This hadith is agreed upon its authenticity. This incident and this blessed family, Abu Talha wa Umm Sulaim, is what some of the Mufassirin said, or many of the Mufassirin said, the ayah of Surah Al-Hashr, ayah number 9, وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصَةً And they give preference to others over themselves, even though they are in dire need. وَمَنْ يُوقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ يعني Allah the Almighty says about this family, they are successful in dunya and the hereafter. And the Prophet وسلم, prays for them and for their barakah. And he prays for Anas and his mother. And he finds some people today, they say that all those companions have upstated and turned away from Islam after the Prophet وسلم, died. And only a few companions, a handful of companions who remained steadfast, that's nonsense. And Nabi وسلم, said, Beware of harming my companions or annoying them. Beware of speaking ill of them by Allah. If any of you happen to donate as much as the mountain of Uhud, of pure gold, that would not even come close to a charity which was given by any of them, equivalent to a handful of food. That's a mud. Wala nasifahu, or even half of it. Because this charity which was given by Abu Talha, uh, the food of the kids, at that time is better than a mountain of gold which is given by anyone as of today. If one can afford that much money or that much gold or that much charity, Sahaba have been chosen by Allah to be honored, to be the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah admired them repeatedly in the Quran and similarly did Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah make us follow the footsteps of our
predecessors, the companions of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and their followers. Amin. So we studied uh, the first hadith in this chapter and to be continued inshallah in the next episode because we ran out of time. Until then, brothers and sisters, I leave you all in the care of Allah. I say this word and I pray to you for me. 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 To him, he born in humans to be the best and give his best religion to them. Allah, our God, is the greatest, the one and only glory. To him, he born in humans to be the best and give his best religion to them. So, why did they know that? Forgetting all about him in paradise, worshipping cows, fire and stones, selling the best with the cheapest price. So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise, worshipping cows, fire and stones, selling their best with the cheapest price. Rasulullah.